Hi guys, welcome back to Bunny Brick Design. So I'm back with another unboxing and actually I got both my bargain bead box and my curated bead box in on the same day. So I'm super excited. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do the unboxing of the bargain bead box because I know there's been a bunch of unboxings that have um, already been posted for the bargain bead box. So what I decided to do was to walk you through my setup process and do a f we'll do a first design um, using the bargain bead box and um, that way you can kind of see my thought process on the beginnings when I first get my bead collection. Anyways, so without further ado, this month is called Cozy Chrysanthemums. So we have a bunch of dis a bunch of really good stuff from what I can see through the bag. All right, so a lot of beads. Woo! So the first thing we have is a 35 millimeter mukite and brass or carnelian pendant. I got the mukite. So we're going to open this up and we're going to put these out on the board. So this is very pretty. It's purple. I don't know if you can see that really well. Um, it's got striations. Um, I really like that. So we're going to set that in there for the moment. Next we have 8 millimeter round mukite beads. 7.5 inch strand. And so that's yellows and purples. Um, so that is the next thing. Six millimeter mukite. Let's see if I can find that. That would be coral. Yep. Oh, that's a coral. Oh, where's my six millimeter mukite? Aha. Six millimeter mukite matte round beads. So these are matte, so they're not shiny. Um, so they kind of have a gray, I mean, they're purple and yellow and beige, but they kind of have a gray undertone. So that is very pretty. Next, we have eight millimeter fossil coral rounds. And so those are very, um, they're, they're beige. So that actually goes, that really goes really well with all of this. Um, next we have five by three, three millimeter hematite synthetic flower spacer beads, which I am looking for those. Um, I am not seeing those. All right, we're going to skip that one for now. We may not have gotten them. Um, next we have six millimeter cr crackle agate rounds. And so that is that and then we have four by three faceted rondelles and that would be these in yellow very pretty And I've got bunnies biting at my feet again. She loves it when I do videos. Then we have eight mil eight by six millimeter faceted glass rondelle beads in dark red. Now this is a very dark, I don't know if you can see that really well, it's a very dark 
ruby red. Um, I'm going to set those in there at the moment. And then we've got 9mm half matte crystal faceted beads slate peacock. And that would be those. Um, they're kind of grayish, but they have that peacock um, patina on it. I don't know if you can see that in... They've got like that purple, yellow... I'm going to set those in there. Ooh, I like those together. Um, okay. And then we have four millimeter bicones in lavender steel. So again, it's a grayish, a grayish uh, purple. Actually goes well with those colors. I'm setting those aside. Next, we have two piece enameled wreath charms so these are they look like little wreaths at first I thought they were Christmassy but they've got orange and beige and like a grayish color in there and they've got leaves so we'll set those in there we have 18 karat gold plated brass chrysanthemum links. And so these are quite fun. So these are wire. So if you're if you look want to do something with wire but you don't want to have to build your own, these are fabulous. Um they feel like they're hardened. Um but these are fun. So we're going to set those there. And I got two packages of those, and I'm wondering if I got two packages of those and I don't have the flower spacers, or maybe I do, I don't know. I haven't found um, the flower spacers, but I got two of those, and so we can make... We can make a lot with those. I'm thinking earrings and maybe maybe something to do with a pendant. Like, put those two together and have... A, ooh, I've got ideas. I have ideas. Next, we have enameled chrysanthemum pendants. Ooh. And so these are quite fun. Um, they definitely go with the theme. Um, and then we have 18 karat gold plated wreath links. So these also would make good earrings so you can hang, um, your ear wire through this part, beads hanging off of there. Or you could do something like that and make a necklace. We're going to see what we're going to do with those. I like those. Those are going to be fun. And then we have a brass curb chain. And so, as usual, it's just chain, but it's, you know, something... Good. It's a little brighter than the gold that we have here, but again, if they're not side by side, it's you know not a not an issue. Um, and then we have two piece nickel free brass magnetic clasps. Um, magnetic clasps are fun. Um, really hard to work with when you're not when they're not attached to something because they stick. But at least, you know, you'll never lose one side of the clasp. Um, so we've got two of those. All right. So that is it for this month. And apparently I did not get the hematite uh, flower spacer rondelles. Um, so I got two of these, I guess, in place of it. But we can make we can make it work. So what I'm going to do when I start setting up, the first thing I do is decide 
which, and I just need a pair of wire cutters here to cut this little wire. I decide which location um, I want the beads to be in. Um, just because then that gives me a idea of colorings. And usually what I will do is I will put all the beads in the tray and picking color themes or um, color choices because I, I get ideas when I'm looking at the unboxing. And so for this, I like these lavender and the gray um, the yellow and the dark purples and the reds are great together. Um, I may do something with the lavender and the and the yellow, but to me, this, something like this color, side by side with that mustardy color just doesn't go, in my opinion. Um, it probably does in like the color, the color wheel thing. I just like to keep my my values um, somewhat the same. So if it's bright, I don't want to put bright colors next to muted colors. Um, I don't. I just. It's just not my style. Anyway, um, you know, if you like doing that, if you like putting, you know, brightly colored um, or yellows with like lavenders and stuff. That's great. Um, and I'm sure there's something with color with color theory. I probably could do something where I took these purples, and I may still, and do like those on the sides with a yellow in between because I'm breaking up, you know, that's possible. Um, but I have a, I have ideas with the yellow. I think I know what I'm going to do on those. Um, getting all the wires. So the, the first thing I like to do is just get everything out and set up together so I can see what, um, what I want to do. And we have a lot of yellows and grays, which I think may go well together. So I may end up doing something with this and then doing something with this. Because I think this dark red and the mustard, mustardy yellow, um, I think it goes well together. And that little bit of purple, dark purple, gray-ish purple in the mukite. works well together and then we have this beigey color of course which could go with either it could go in here but I think it may go better in there and I know Thanksgiving's coming up and for some reason when I look at the the reds here I think of cranberry sauce <laughs> This makes me think of squash. Um, so the yellow reminds me of like pumpkin soup or pumpkin pie. And the red reminds me of cranberry sauce. Um, I don't know why every time I look at some of these beads I start thinking food. Maybe it's because it's a couple weeks before. Well, it's a week before Thanksgiving for me. Um, you'll probably be seeing this the week of Thanksgiving or, you know, the week be right before. But yeah, I've got a week to go. All right, so now that we've got everything out, um, my first step would be to decide what I want to do first. And I don't know if I want to do something with this first and maybe find some, um, not the red, maybe doing something like this because this Mukite pendant has... Um, it has the purples and the, the pinky colors in it. 
Uh, see, I don't like that. I do like those beads together. I just don't like those. Um... And, and again, so this is my design process. I start putting beads together, lining them up, seeing what they look like. Um, not sure what I want to do. And then I'll take things off. I do want to do something with this pendant first. And I do like the idea of putting those with it. And maybe not the dull ones but there's now that I like and then maybe doing nope those are too small so then we're going to put that and woo, throwing beads and that but I want some gold in there so we are going to break out our Spacer beads. See if I can find some some good spacer beads here. Let me break out my So right now I'm looking for some spacer beads. I don't like those. I may do these or these, let's take those out. Um, oh, sorry about the sirens. Looks like and fire trucks. Okay. All right, so I could use those maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a, I got a piece of wire here, and it's copper wire. That's fine. I just want to string these up to see if I were to put maybe a spacer. Let's do this. Do that. Do that. Put a spacer. So this is my design process. I don't like that. Let's try bead caps. Um, I have some smaller bead caps here. Um, let's try that. And what I think I'm going to do is I may do this because that'll go right next to that. And let's do two of those so that we have a little bit of space for that pendant to sit on there. I think that'll work. And then we can do bead cap. That. And then that I like, and then maybe a couple of those, one of those, one of those, and another one of those. I'll uh, see. I like that. All right, so we're gonna make that. Um, and there's my design. So this is what I do. So I, I start out, um, I get an idea, I plan out a little bit, and then I start playing with it. And so I set up my beads. I know I wanna use these. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna take some beetle on. And I am going to find a, if I can find one here, a bead stopper. Ooh. 
just because I don't want to lose the beads. And I'm going to start stringing this, and then we'll get started. So I'm going to string just one of these spacer beads, because I'm going to start on one side. And then I'm going to string the bead cap, the faceted, the stone, the faceted, a bead cap, and then a spacer, and then do that. So we have that there. Very nice. Now I am going to get a jump ring for that. And um, just so we have that put on. So that's round. All right, now that I've got that. Now the decision is going to be which side do I want facing forward? Do I want this side facing forward or this side? This side has a little more detail than this side. So I think I want this side forward. And again, it's probably not going to matter um, too much at this stage. Um, because again, people, it's not like it's an earring. Um, people can turn it around however they want. All right. And I think what I may do just to secure this, because that is a little bit heavy, um, I'm going to do the two jump ring trick. So if you have a pendant that you don't want to lose, and you're afraid it's going to slip through the wire. Um, one trick is if you can get it through the hole on your pendant, which I should be able to there, put two jump rings. That way, if one falls off, you still have the other one um, securing it. All right, and so that is on there. And I think that's gonna look good with the two jump rings. And now we're gonna start the other side. And I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving coming up. I don't know if if you celebrate Thanksgiving or not, but if you do, um, what do you like to do? Do you watch the game? Do you watch the parade? I tend to, um, and I know it's bad, I tend to cook Thanksgiving dinner. And while I'm cooking Thanksgiving dinner, I will admit I start watching Christmas movies. Um, it's my little guilty pleasure. Oh, now see, I really like that. It is, that makes me, it's, it's understated and elegant. So, now we are going to need to do another bead cap. One of these. I don't know how many of those purple colored we may have to do chain because there's one, there's one, there's one. So there's one, two, one, two. So we don't have very many of the purple, purple ones of those. 
So, decisions, decisions. All right, let's do these at least and see how far we get with what I have. Um, oops. Because we may be able to fill in with seed beads or other beads. I'm sure if I dig through my seed beads, I can find, um, I can definitely find purples to match that and we could do a pattern in purple and gold and, and seed beads to finish this off. Or pearls or something. All right, so we're gonna do that's two sets of the, that. Now let's do the third set. And I need more of those. Oopsie. And yes, you can tell I get I'm I'm very excited by these this bead kit this month. Um especially when I open it up and have to get started right away. All right, and bead cap All right, so there's that side, and I really like that. So earlier today, we had a little bunny accident with one of my other bunnies. He, something spooked him. Um, and I don't know if it was the neighbor's loud music or whatever, but something spooked him and he ran into his pen and ran face first into the cage and gave himself a little bloody nose, which I felt awful. Um, it stopped. He's eating. He seems to be okay. Um, he's one of my fosters, so I'm waiting to hear back from the rescue as to whether or not we should take him to the vet for a checkup. Um, unfortunately, I have a couple of neighbors, well, one neighbor, that likes to play super loud music, um, and it was vibrating my house, um... So earlier, so I was wanting to do this video earlier today, but it was loud and um, really couldn't do it. But anyway, he's fine. He scared me. He just, you know, wanted to keep me on my toes. I really like that. I don't know if I want seed beads with this. Um, just because I like the the crystal. I'm going to pause you. I think I'm going to go find some some beads to add into this. So I will be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. And it just so happens, I think I have the perfect beads to go with this um, design. So I have these grayish lavender pearls, and I think I'm going to alternate lavender pearls and that and maybe some kind of spacer bead um, every so often in a pattern. So these are four millimeter round beads, saturated, color trend saturated. Um, and I get them in bulk uh, through one of the suppliers that I am a, a wholesale purchaser of. Um, And I think these are going to go, and we could probably put some of those with some of the other colors. All right, so they're on the silvery side, but 
I think if we did something like, and I'm sure I could find another set, but I'm thinking maybe alternating like that, and then every five beads put a spacer. We'll see. Um, uh, don't like it. Wait, all right. Designing on the fly. All right. So I wonder if we do one of these and then three of these. That looks good. I just need to figure out what to do next. I do want some gold in there, so maybe finding gold round spacer beads. Not the same color gold. Not quite the same color gold. So maybe, maybe what we do is we find the mat and we get do I have small spacer beads or small would that fit on that? So again, this is the this is the design part where nope, don't like that. Um well, let's do this. We'll do that. We will do that cuz I do want some gold. I want to tie this together. So that I like. Let's see if this next set will look good. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It definitely switches patterns, but it still ties it together um, with the same beads. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. And we're going to keep going until we hit the length that I want it. And so I don't necessarily, on my length, um, I don't know if you, when you design, if you specifically go for a specific size or if you go for, you know, like I want it to drop and I want it to fall here on the neckline. I tend to figure out where I want it on my neckline. And then, of course, I usually add extender chains to everything so that people can lengthen or shorten the necklace depending on what they want to wear it wear it as but they also it will fall where I intend it to because I think especially something with a big pendant such as this shouldn't be like right up against your neck it should it should drop down um kind of on your breastbone um I think that works as a good length um, all right, we've got at least, um, we need at least five of those on each side, five sets, not five of those, but five sets. So I'm going to pause you. I'm going to finish putting on these beads and then I will come back when I've got all the beads on and we can take a look. 
Okay, guys, I'm back. So I finished stringing up. Um, I ended up using one, two, three, four, five, six and a half to get it to the length that I wanted. So now I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use one of the magnetic clasps. Um, so first things we're going to have to do is, this is going to be tricky because um, these won't come apart very easily. And I am going to clasp it on, oops, that is if I can get my spacer bead through. Um, so I'm just going to crimp right onto the clasp. No need for jump rings, no need for any of that. And if I can keep my pliers from sticking to it. Um, that's the one problem with magnetic clasps is they like to stick to everything. Um, all right, so now that side is on. Now we're going to do the other side so this is where the fun happens where we have to make sure we get this tight enough um, but not too tight And so I just like to feed through, and I know I say this probably in every video, several beads just so I know I'm going to have a nice secure end. Um, and if it does start to come loose, um, hopefully somebody will notice it before it fails and they can get it to me and I can repair it. However, I have not had anybody come back and tell me that the crimp came undone or um, anything like that. I've had the clasp itself broke, you know, the, the lobster claws. I've had those fail. Um, I have not had anybody tell me that they've had issues with the crimp failing. They've had, you know, like I said, the lobster claw broke. Um, and again, so what I'm trying to do now is just make sure that there's not like, I can't pull a big gap like that. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure that all the beads are super tight and trying to just tighten it up. Like that. And I think that's good. There's a little bit of play. Oh, a little more than I'd like still. Why is there more play than I'd like? Oh, not too bad. All right. So once you get it good, give it a good crimp. And we can trim our wires. So design number one. Oh, I need better flush cutters. There we go. And then... There's a little end there that needs, there we go. Perfect. All right, so design number one with a magnetic clasp. So the way that's gonna look on our mannequin, let me put it back up and give you a good preview here. So design number one on the mannequin. That is gorgeous. That is just absolutely gorgeous. 
All right, so Bargain Bee Box Cozy Chrysanthemums. Uh, unboxing and design number one. Um, I think this video is getting kind of long, so we're probably going to stop it here. And um, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.